Welcome back to Season 3 of the podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Blackwood. As many of you know, I wrote my autobiography as a survivor of human trafficking called Custom Justice, but if you didn't know, you do now. Keeping in line with that, this entire season has been focused on interviewing people who did or plan to write about their own experiences as trauma survivors and how they overcame their past. If that sounds like you, reach out. We can talk about having you on the show, too. As much as we all hate commercials, they are a necessary evil these days. This is what keeps the show on the air. You can also show support by purchasing one of my mini books or donating through PayPal. You can find the links to either option in the podcast description. As always, a portion of the proceeds do go to local organizations that help fight human trafficking. Today, we're talking about dream interpretation and this is such a cool little exit for me normally the whole podcast is about talking about trauma uh so this is going to be a nice little exit and i think a lot of people are going to really enjoy this this is great i'm excited um so tell us a little bit what is dream interpretation for the people that don't know okay well my intention today is to talk to people about what dream interpretation is, how to do it, and how it helps people to fulfill and increase self-worth. Okay, that's the intention. Dream interpretation is analyzing your dreams and deriving meaning from them that helps you to be authentic, to be yourself, to integrate all aspects of yourself and... It is such a rich part of human nature, dreams, that it would be an absolute waste to ignore them. Uh, We know the intricacies of our physical body, and thanks to uh, neuroscientists and the imagery of the brain, we're now able to see that there is incredible richness within the brain. And we are only really scratching the surface in terms of psychology in in the last 100 years. And dreams have kind of been um, pushed to the side a little bit. And I think that is a, a, you know, it's unfortunate, but I'm going to encourage people to attempt to interpret their dreams to derive meaning, to find out who they are and their mission. And that's going to increase their self-worth. Here is a very simple way to interpret your dreams. In fact, this comes from Dr. Carl Jung, who was or probably is one of the leaders of the 20th century when it comes to understanding the unconscious mind and dream interpretation specifically. He says, when you have a dream, draw it. Draw it on paper as best as you can. Draw it, whether it's, you know, like stick figures or you know, shading, however you want to do it, draw it, make it concrete. That is a really key first step because if you're just doing it inside your head, you know, that's it's still got that vague sort of cloudy in your mind sort of state. But if you draw it, you make it concrete. Another great way is to uh, sculpt something out of beeswax or clay or to make some art. And I know art therapy is becoming more popular now as a way of uh, exploring uh, things that are invisible within our within our souls and with our minds. After you have drawn your dreams, the next step is to stare at the dream and to almost press play on the movie of your dream and let it play on past the image that you've drawn and let the images speak for themselves. Now, this is where the person has to really sit with the image and allow the image to speak to them, give them some insights. And that is the, the absolute crux or the, the simplest way I can talk about how to interpret your dreams. That's very cool. So I, I have a couple of books that I've been working on writing for the last couple mm-hmm. of years uh, that came from dreams. So Tell me about I- the books. Uh, one of them is a uh, historical fiction book about a couple who their relationship didn't work out, but they had a son. And in this dream that I had, they are uh, the mother and the father are both heading to 
um, their son's wedding. And there's a tragedy that strikes. The son ends up uh, in dire straits while his parents are on a train going from Chicago to Denver. This is a dream that was so, so long ago that I didn't even live in Denver yet. (laughs) Mm. But it's, it's always been this fascinating story in my head that I, I need to get out on paper. But like you were saying, to create it in some way um, is hugely beneficial. I, I, I don't think I would have remembered this dream well enough to be able to write it into a book if I hadn't, the second I woke up, rolled over, grabbed the pad of paper and an ink pen and wrote down the synopsis of, of what happened. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was a good choice. Yeah, dreams can be forgotten very quickly if you are not uh, practiced at trying to remember them. Yeah. But that's yeah. great that you got it down and did something about it. <laughs> and and did you, did, would you find that uh, writing the book, uh, it helped you, I mean, express, your, express yourself and bring something of value into the world for not only yourself but for others? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So how does dream interpretation help us to uh, identify and develop a sense of self-worth and purpose? How does that link? Okay. So I'm going to draw on Carl Jung, but also Dr. John Demartini. And you know that I'm a Demartini method facilitator. And I find that the two of these things go quite well together. So Carl Jung would say, draw your dreams, let the images speak for themselves and practice introspection to find out what the unconscious is trying to tell you. And that's coming from this idea of make the unconscious conscious and and blend all parts of yourself uh, so that you can know who you are. Okay, so fulfill the the purpose of philosophy, which is to know thyself. That's an incredible thing. Self-awareness, self-actualization. That's one aspect that's Jung. Then if we take the Martini's philosophy and psychology of finding out what you truly value and living your life in alignment with that. And I find that when the dreams provide us with a rich tapestry or a movie and material that can help us to articulate clearly our values, our mission and our vision and that's going to increase fulfillment and self-worth. So that's the, that's the philosophy background, uh, the psychology background. That's very cool. Uh, yeah. can, you, can you think of any dreams that you've had that have helped you kind of develop your sense of, of purpose in life? Yeah, I've had a re- reoccurring dream of being able to levitate and fly in my dreams. And not only just do that, and when I say levitate, I mean, it might just be a few inches off the ground or um, uh, a little bit higher. I've also had very lucid dreams where I'm flying and it's, I mean, it's freaking amazing. It's like, <laughs> wow, you really think that you're awake and you're flying and um, that if you just could wake up, you would know how to do it. And it's, it, I think I maybe I watched Star Wars too many times as a kid, <laughs> but I feel like I have the Jedi trick to like reach out across the room for my lightsaber or in this case, you know, my iPhone. But it, it <laughs> feels so real. And that's been my reoccurring dream of not only levitating and flying, but teaching others within the dream how to do that. Oh, wow. Very, and so I'm a teacher, I'm an educator. And so if levitation and flying are a metaphor, I'm learning how to teach others to fly. That is very cool. That is like I'm teaching others to lift themselves up and to do the extraordinary. And so I've taken that dream as go teach that to people. That is very cool. I'm going to tell you another really cool dream. Like I've drawn some dreams. I mean, I, I'm not the best drawer, but actually, actually I cheat when I draw what I do. And people, you can do this too. You can use your, your Mac screen as a light board and you can trace. So I just look up an image on Google and I kind of trace around the image to, to get a better picture than what I can do with a free form. I've had this one dream where I was flying 
and I f moved slowly through a glass pane. And I tell you what, that was a weird experience of not walking through a wall, but flying through a glass wall to the other side. Oh. A, a bizarre experience, beautiful experience. And so I drew this and I thought, okay, so what does this mean? Okay, flying through something that seems impenetrable and then coming through to the other side. And if I think of the work that I do, I help people break through barriers and make them realize that they're capable of more and that they're capable of going past those natural limitations or limitations that are just perceived as a limitation. So I, I now interpret all of my dreams of going, how, how can I use this to teach others to raise their self-worth, to go beyond their limitations? And that's just something I've been able to understand by drawing my dreams and looking at the metaphor and the emotion around the dreams. And the unconscious mind has got an incredible amount of wisdom. It wants us to be a fulfilled being. So I've found that there is a theme in my dreams. And this is what people can do is to look for the running thread the running theme through their dreams and especially reoccurring dreams are usually like, you know, the red flag, not red flag in, in sense of a bad thing, but like a, a green flag saying, yes, go this way. You're on track. And we want you, the unconscious mind wants you to pay attention to those ones. It's like, you're not getting the lesson. Come on. Or there's more to get, go with this. And when people can recognize the, th the thread and the theme of their dreams, they are better able to articulate, what it is that they're meant to be doing with their life and who they're meant to be. And this is tied directly to their highest purpose, their vision and their mission and the fulfillment of their being. So oh, wow. I had, I had many dreams of flying and teaching people to fly within the dream. Which, so, I mean, now it's obvious for me, but for people who are coming to this perhaps for the first time or have been doing a little while and still don't really know, Look at your dreams and the images and symbology and try to think, okay, what is it trying to tell me about who I'm meant to be and what I'm meant to do that is linked with my highest purpose? I believe what that are, the, sorry. What are, what are some of those common um, uh, symbols that you would see? Okay. So Carl Jung talked about archetypes. Archetypes means patterns, patterns of thought behavior, and also, um, I guess, roles or positions. So archetypes can, you know, the classic one, king, queen, prince, princess, villain, hero, joker, magician. And there's so many different types, the empress, the warrior, the witch, the, um, the child, the lovers, you know, there's plenty of archetypes to study and Carl Jung suggested that everybody dreams in archetypes across all cultures, across all times. And so archetypes are the embedded wisdom of humanity and they will be expressed in a person's dreams, depending on the culture that they live in, in a certain way. So for example, if you're born into a Christian world, you might see angels if you're born into a shamanic culture, you might see the animal spirits. If you're born into the, uh, a time maybe in the next 50 years or so, you might see extraterrestrials. In fact, some people are already seeing extraterrestrials in their dreams. I think that archetypes are an incredible richness or source of richness for interpreting our dreams and knowing the role that we are destined to play. And so I saw the role of the teacher or the guide or the healer as, as my, my dreams way of saying, be this guy, go and do these things. And when I trusted my dreams, things started to go really well for me. And you, you find your authenticity, you, you get in alignment with what your soul is attempting you to learn 
you get in alignment with what your soul is here to do and and to grow into the person that you're meant to be. It's a really beautiful a project is dream interpretation. I highly recommend it to people. That's pretty awesome. I've had some reoccurring dreams in my life and some of them kind of touch on traumas. And I know that, yeah, how can we use our dreams to explore and overcome the past traumas that, that can be impacting who we are, a sense of self-worth, our, our sense of purpose? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm just going to go back to what Carl Jung suggests draw your dreams as best as you can and it might be just a couple of the key uh, scenarios or images whether they're people or items uh, colors to draw them and then allow those images to speak for themselves so that it requires some introspection and contemplation while staring at your own drawing or artistic creation of your dreams that's that's the step one because then your unconscious has got a direct link with your conscious, you're now saying, look, I'm paying attention to this. It's of value to me. Give me some more juice, you know, give me some more information and you will stimulate the unconscious to rise up into the conscious mind and give you tangible thoughts. That's, that's a step one. Then if you pair this with the Demartini method, you're able to go through the Demartini method and find the benefits to you and others of events in your life that you perceive as traumatic to the point that you are able to say that there is an equal amount of positives and negatives, uh, benefits and drawbacks to these, to you and others from these perceived events that you will no longer label them as traumatic. You will see them as having neither positive or negative charge, but that they just were as they were and you can appreciate them in a new light which will help you to be authentic and to fulfill your being. Very cool. And there's, there's a pattern typically to our dreams, right? Yeah. I mean, we can have archetypes means patterns and we can also have reoccurring dreams, which is right. a certain pattern. You have things over and over until you get the point. It's much like a child who requests from their parents, you know, read me the same story again because <laughs> and because I've had some time teaching in a uh, Waldorf Steiner elementary school I learned that a child will ask its parents to read a story again not because they've forgotten the story or they want to annoy the parents although it can <laughs> sometimes seem that way it's because it's because they are, they one they love the predictability they're like yeah I I know this story and I know how it ends. I want to hear it again. And they are deriving a new interpretation or an appropriate meaning from the story every time. And it's appropriate for the child. And that's why they ask, read the story again, because they, they're still getting meaning from it. Plus, they like the predictability of it. So they're creating their world of structure from a story. And dreams will give us a reoccurring message a reoccurring symbol so that we can derive as much richness from it and really get the point because as we know a lot of dream interpretate or dream symbols are really confusing yes so it the unconscious is wise and it wants us to learn it so it's got to give it to us a few times i find now that i've really sat with my own dreams and i've drawn them for 20 plus years now and i've got journals filled with these these drawings and some interpretations that i dream less really because, yeah i and when i have a dream it's quite vivid and i'm like oh that was a good one and i'll get to work at analyzing it you also can get to the point where you can remember it days later because you've developed that dream memory wow. but in the beginning that's quite tough um i was having periods during my 20s and 30s, I was having three plus vivid dreams per night and I could wake up and just write them down and draw them because I was really focusing on them and I, I valued them. I was like, yeah, I really want to remember my dreams. And that kind of sends a message to the unconscious that you care about them and they just like, yeah, give me some more. Come on, let's go. Let's do this. <laughs> so you can actually have a relationship with the parts of yourself that are in the unconscious. 
and it will respond. That is amazing. I've known people that, that have tried to tell me that they've never had a dream in their life. Um, do you think that's possible or do it they could... just not remember? Well, I mean, if you're not remembering and then you don't perceive them, then they don't exist. However, neuroscience, a brain image scan says that every night our neurons are firing like uh, it's a, a fiesta. There is <laughs> definitely a visual, auditory, sensory, all the, all the firings are going on that would say this person is looking at something, seeing something, hearing something, full sensory, but they're asleep. So there is, there is a movie going on for sure. Wow. Everyone, everyone does dream um, and whether they wake up and remember or not is another, another story. Right. And that's kind of what I was always thinking was happening was they're just not remembering what it is that they were seeing. Um, yeah. So having, having an intention to remember your dreams is certainly a great step and don't give up yeah. so quickly, you know, stick at it and you will be rewarded. It will be worth the effort. Right. I mean, it would be so amazing if more people would learn how to listen to their dreams and to get this value uh, because it's themselves trying to tell them something. Yeah. Well, we live in an age of, I want it now in three seconds. So it, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't help to, um, to be distracted by, you know, all of these things. However, if a person is truly interested in living a life of fulfillment and a life of meaning, clarify your highest values, realize that dream interpretation is going to significantly uh, fast track that fulfillment. Then you start to give it a bit more um, time and, and, and effort rather than just go, nope, if it's not going to happen in a few minutes, I don't want to do it. So I, th I feel that once you know your highest value and you, and you realize I'm willing to endure a little bit of pain, a little bit of sweat, I'm willing to uh, use some effort in order to fulfill my, my highest being and my mission, then the challenges become uh, worthwhile. What do you think is the most uh, successful case of dream interpretation that you've ever seen or experienced that somebody else has been through? Well, I'm going to talk uh, about Carl Jung's own experience, his own life. Uh, his biography is, is, truly amazing he's a guy who dedicated him himself to using his own mind as a, a laboratory right and and interpret his own dreams and therefore you help his clients so he got to the point where he was almost living in his mind and interpreting like as his job right it's his job and he got to the point where he realized okay i've got all this richness in the unconsciousness and I'm helping my clients, what can I do to ground it in reality? And so he developed, uh, he started doing stonework and he built uh, a, a house from, from hand, from hands, you know, just with stones and, and concrete just by hand, he built his own house and grounded all of what he knew from his dream interpretation about who he was meant to be. And wow. in that, of course, is the lesson to other people. It's like, take what you have perceived in the dreams, ground it in reality, create something in the world. And if you think of, uh, well, actually the house or the psyche, uh, sorry, the psyche or the mind is often symbolized as a house. And so what better thing to create for Jung is an actual house made out of stone. Interestingly, many people will dream of being in houses often from childhood or some other house or even a house they've never seen and different rooms. This is a perfect indication that you are exploring the psyche and different rooms. And it's the unconscious way of helping you map it out in a way that is familiar so that you can move around and go into the different rooms and, and explore certain things that the unconscious is trying to tell you rather than it just being a a vague sort of misty ethereal world, give the, the individual something that they can relate to. So you're connecting the known to the unknown. 
So if you're dreaming of being in a house, this is a, a good indication that you're beginning to map your unconscious. Interesting. Wow. That sounds and like he, a, he spent his lifetime on this, huh, Carl? Young? I mean, it's his, it's his life's work. And it's he, amazing. He really recommended everybody start their own book or journal of dream drawings and just keep at it for years and you will you will see an interesting thread about who you are meant to be. There's a great meditation I learned from uh, a Jewish guy who teaches the Kabbalah. I actually went, went and saw this guy when I was 18 and he does a meditation called the House of the Psyche and essentially you, you close your eyes, you imagine a, your dream home or the ideal, idealized home in front of you this is a, a waking dream, not a dream like when you're asleep, but a visualization. And you can walk through this house and explore the bedrooms, the, the basement, the attic, the, the living rooms, the garden. And then once you come out of the meditation, you write down you know, what you noticed. This is an, an, a conscious version of exploring your mind. And if you go into the basement, you're going to see the plumbing. So you're going to see what's going on perhaps in your internals, not only your physical internals, but your, your psychological internals. If you go into the attic, you might find that the attic is not necessarily dusty, but it might have a, a beautiful inner sanctuary, a place for connecting with your highest being. Like it's at the top, like a tower. You might go into the house and go, is there lots of light? Is there lots of dark? Is there animals in the house? Are there people in the house or is it empty and cold? And a lot of these will have, a direct reflection on your real life. And by studying this, you can then go and go, oh, I'm going to make some changes to my life. So even just a waking visualization through a house of the soul can be very fruitful. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So I know you've talked a couple of times about the patterns and the archetypes. Uh, have you got a, a particular archetype other than the teacher that was showing up for you? Magician. Oh, the magician. Yeah, magician. I love. Um, so the magician is the character who explores the, the laws of the universe and then travels around and in a way uh, teaches, but is more of a guide in saying rather than transmitting information directly, um, the magician sometimes performs. And so I'm also consider myself a performer. In fact, I've had many jobs where I have been a performer. So I, I integrate that, the, the magic into whatever I do. And I mean, that can be from as much as like I've worked with children. So magic tricks is always good. <coughs> um, but also the performer, you know, being a professional speaker is, is a performer. And so I've taken those archetypes and embodied them and, and said, all right, I'm, I'm going to truly accept this about myself and let us say invoke that and bring it out into the, into the real world. <coughs> Excuse and me. Do you think nightmares can be uh, interpreted to be helpful also? Very much. Um, yeah. I had nightmares when I was uh, 12 years old that were pretty significant and excuse me, I just got a cough. <coughs> and I found that in initially, yeah, they're terrifying, but I, I found that they inspired me to look into the dream world more and go, well, what is actually going on? You know, years later, as a 16 year old, I, I got into meditation. It's like, well, what, what are these, these things in the mind and what does it mean to have a purpose? So sometimes things that we perceive as traumatic can be first of all ways to try and process what is going on. That's a classic theory of dream interpretations to help you process things. <coughs> the other way is to, is that it's going to inspire you to find your authentic self. And sometimes we need a painful experience to bring us back online. And so you can start to experience, uh, interpret trauma or painful experiences as feedback that is helping you to become authentic and come back to your center. So after time, a nightmare 
can actually be perceived as something you can be grateful for and say, if I didn't get that message, I wouldn't have learned the lesson. Sometimes people need pain in order to learn the lesson. Wow. <coughs> you know, it's interesting. I, I think I'm starting to kind of uh, pick little pieces out of a reoccurring nightmare I had as a kid and starting to kind of um, understand what some of those um, symbols meant. So um, let's what have you see got? If you, if, you, can... if, if you want to share one of them. Yeah, let's let's do that. Um, I have uh, two mainly that started when I was about four years old. But the the one that I I was thinking of, um, I went in my dream. I went camping with my family. It was my mother, my father, my older brother, and myself. Uh, my older brother had done something wrong, and as punishment, my parents put him into a cave in the mountain, and there was a door over it with bars a small barred window in the door and my brother was being forced to sleep in there for the night while we all slept in a camper and in the morning when we went to go and get him out of the cave for breakfast there was nothing left but a pile of bones he was dead <clears throat> it terrified me and I had this reoccurring nightmare so often that as a kid I would grab my pillow and go sleep underneath my brother's bed to try to make sure that he was okay what age were you? About four. Yeah. Well, naturally, as a four-year-old, it's going to be scary as hell, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, how have you learned to, or what um, insights have you taken from that now as an, as an adult? Well, that was around the same time that he had begun molesting me. Um, I think looking back on it now, I'm, I, I kind of have pieced it together to where my brain was telling me I need to uh, have something between us. I need to, uh, he's still my brother and I still love him, but there needs to be some kind of a safety door between us. Um, even though it's <clears throat> going to feel like he's cut off from my life and that I'm losing him completely. Hmm. Interesting that you, you, the dream placed him in a cave and in a way sep you separated him within right. your mind. That's what happened, right? Yes. So as a four, as a four year old, if you put so from a four year old's point of view, putting someone in, in a cave is, is truly isolating them far away from you, right? Right. It was like a jail cell. And meanwhile, you and your parents are in a camper van, which is a, a, a thing that travels around the countryside, yeah? So there's a sense of freedom in that. Right, right. Perhaps that was uh, initial impetus for you to, to go travel as a flight attendant. Huh. Or as a way, as a way of, um, you know, of interpreting it and, and distancing yourself. Or, you know what I'm saying? Right. That's that's That symbol, like, was planted in there. Yeah. But wow. you, you instinctively knew that traveling would be the safest place away from your brother. That is fascinating. I wonder if that's why I ended up the way I did. I mean, I, I'm 43 years old and I've moved 43 times in my life, an average of once per year, most of that in my adult life. Interesting how at four, your unconscious mind placed you in a camper van with parents, which is usually a, a place of safety, but in the camper van, a, a vehicle for traveling. And then you ended up in a, in a career as a flight attendant. Right. <laughs> Man, and my four-year-old self was smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now you're going on a, a traveling, a speaking traveling tour. Yeah, yeah. I still have the bug. I have not worked out all of the uh, need and desire to travel quite yet. So. Well, this is this is part of the the journey, is to <laughs> go do it and kind of figure it out later, right? <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> one more maybe interpretation, if you would, before we go. You, let's go. Let's go. Okay. All right. So the other one that I had when I was a, a kid started when I was about four and lasted for many years. Um, it was oh gosh, I just thought of another dream. Uh, anyway, <laughs> this one. <laughs> 
I was very young and I heard a noise outside and I got up and I looked out my window with my little chin on my window. So, cause I was really tiny at the time and I looked out and I saw hands and bodies crawling out of the grass, out of the ground. The sky was a deep red color and it just, it made me feel very uneasy as I was watching all these, these things come out of the ground. They were, people at the time i had no idea what a zombie was but this was a zombie nightmare um they started going into all of the homes and they came into our home and i was watching them uh, heading for our front door and i ran into my mom and dad's room my mom was not in bed but my father was so i woke him up and told him uh there's bad things there's bad people on their way and where's mom? Where's mommy? So he told me that mommy had gotten up to go to the bathroom and the bathroom had become one of them. Um, she was, she was dead to me. Hmm. It, it scared me so bad. And my dad and I in the dream ended up running out of the bedroom and running into my room because these things were now coming up the stairs too while they were coming up the stairs, we rent, went and hid underneath my bed and watched as they shuffled from one room to another to look for us. My brother is yet again showing up in this dream. Um, this time, after these these zombies have shuffled off into his room, um, he's now one of them. And they're shuffling around inside my bedroom on both sides of my bed. And my, my dad and I are watching their feet as they're going by. And my brother's feet show up. They're the clean ones. Um, he comes down on his knees and he leans over as a zombie and looks us dead in the eyes underneath the bed. And then nods his head and stands back up and walks away. Hmm. And that was always where I woke up and literally went running down the hallway to go and scream for my father because I was terrified. Um, they got really frustrated with me that year. This was probably happening every other night for a long time. Reoccurring dream. What oh, age? Yeah. Starting at four and lasting until I was about seven. Interesting. If you think about a zombie, um, when they bite you, you become one of them, right? Right. Right. And the, it, for me, the nodding of your brother, that seemed quite significant. That, that seemed to be the, the climax. He's, he's given you the, the nod. Now, was the nod interpreted like we're after you or he knows something and he's saying yes to you? It's like he's, he's saying, oh, there you are. Stay there. That is a very interesting dream. Now you've got these you've got these hands coming out of the grass, yeah? People yeah. coming out of the ground. So there's like a almost like a resurrection. I'm thinking Michael Jackson thriller as well. Oh yeah. But, um, <laughs> people coming out of the ground, re being resurrected and then walking around the house. It's kind of like I see dead people, but the real message of that movie was that the dead people were trying to communicate something. Yeah. You know, so that they could be, um, get some closure. And perhaps the dreams were trying to say, be the one that helps people get closure. Be the communicator. Oh, wow. And your brother nodding, going, yep, that's what you're here to do. Wow. Oh. How does that sit? Oh, that hits hard. Um, I did mention before that when I was four is when he uh, was molesting me. Uh, but one of the things that I talk about when I do interviews is that when that happened, he was only seven. And mm. there was no way that my brother should have known the things that he knew. He shouldn't have... have had this kind of knowledge of the human anatomy at that point. And that in my adulthood, I have come to understand 
that if he was doing these things, it was more than likely his way of trying to process through what had happened to him because he didn't yeah. understand it. So and has he been molested? I, I'm pretty sure he was. Um, he doesn't remember anything. Well, last I talked to him was over a decade ago now. Um, but he told me for a long time that he didn't remember anything before he turned 18, which is a sign of severe trauma in a boy. Um, mm. Usually a child that, between, the, between the age of zero and seven, they live in an age of imitation. Um, you know, we our mirror neurons copy everything we see as we try to find our sense of ego and self. And like I said before, with children, you know, with stories, <clears throat> they will also reenact the story over and over again, like a fairy tale, because they're gaining richness and meaning from it. But this can also work in the sense of anything that has been in their experience. And they will perhaps reenact it in areas where that they perhaps feel you know, ready to be able to do it because they, they're trusting with the people they're around. However, it, it came out and it expressed itself through molestation of you from him. Yeah. I'm just throwing out ideas there. I'm not a psychologist and I'm not a, I don't really know, but this is just my ideas from studying education and a little bit of child development. Right. And what you said about him nodding, saying, yep, that's what you're supposed to go do. Go do that. I, I, I wonder if my brain at that point was trying to make sense of everything that was happening and realizing that he also needed somebody to speak for him. Damn straight. Wow. Interesting how your mind formed it in a dream and it took a few years to for you to chew on it and to then come to this point now where that's exactly what you're doing for people. You're giving them, you're an ambassador for people who have no voice. You're giving yeah. a voice to the zombies or the people who f may feel like one. I mean, you imagine you being a zombie, wow. you have no control over your, over anything. You, you feel trapped literally in your body. And in fact, if you look at zombie movies, people can shoot them tear their arms off and they keep moving and they're, they're, they're walking dead. And I get, I'm only going to assume that if you're a, a survivor or if you're a, someone who is currently being human trafficked, you would feel a bit like a zombie. You're walking dead. You're, you're there, but you just, you have no control over your body. You are, yeah. you are being um, controlled by something else. Wow. Oh, this hits having hard. Having some, in, having some, <laughs> having some insights. Yeah, yeah. Well, and there it goes again. You showing once more that yes, the nightmares can absolutely tell you a lot about your self worth and your purpose. Yeah, within the nightmare there is wisdom. Within the the fantasy or the the happy dream, there is also wisdom. Wow. The unconscious, the unconscious will give us the images we are ready to receive uh, to assist us with our destiny. I'm certain of that. So, and now I know it's we... our job. Now, now it's our job to take them and and say, "I will be the the one that that carries this message and and shares it with the world." Yes, I'm. I'm glad that that's what I'm doing now. Um, but yeah, it took me 40 some odd years to get here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I know we talked the last time I interviewed you, um, about how people can get a hold of you to get more information on this. Um, but can you do that for me one more time? <laughs> Cause I know we've got some people that are going to want to be reaching out to you and talking about this stuff selfworthsam.com is the best place to go selfworthsam.com or on social media selfworthsam and if people want my free online course which is to do with the imposter syndrome you can go to the same website 
or they can go there and book a free 15 minute call with me to find out if they want to work with me, if we're a good match. And I've also got books on Amazon. So, but self-worth Sam is, is the, the starting place. Selfworthsam.com. That's amazing. Thank you. You're very welcome. You're so welcome. Much love. So much love to you too, Sam. You're, you're amazing. And I'm, I'm so glad that Holly and, and, uh, Taylor told me to, you know, Hey, you got to talk to this guy. <laughs> oh yeah. Me too. They're, I, I love those two gals. They're great. <laughs> yep. They're amazing. It's something, something about, <clears throat> it's something about the girls from Denver. <laughs> <clears throat> well, and their podcast interview of me, uh, just aired just recently. Um, these shows are recorded in advance. So at this point, it's been a couple mm. of weeks ago. Um, but at the point of recording, it just released this morning. Uh, and that was Real Life Unpacked. So if you guys want to know more about Sam's story, Sam was uh, interviewed by them. If you want to know about my story, why I was interviewed about them, Real Life Unpacked. And that's that's exactly yeah. what it is. They're super cool people. I love them. Yes. <laughs> Sam. All right, my good friend, it has been yes. a pleasure talking to you again. And I wish you and all your listeners... Uh, the greatest of fulfillment and and lots of love your way thank you and come visit us here someday soon i'm gonna all right have a wonderful day sam thank you see you amanda (laughs) bye If you've enjoyed tonight's episode, please make sure you check out the episode description. There you're going to find links on how you can learn more about this guest, links to connect with them on social media, and how to support the podcast. Remember, I don't get paid to do this. My boss is a bit tight-fisted, but I can say that I work for myself. In short, this show really is all about the guest. If you've enjoyed their interview, please feel free to let them know. You can also tune into my other podcast, Growth from Darkness, which is co-hosted by a lovely lady from Australia. We talk about what trauma responses are and healthy ways to move beyond the past. For more information, just go to growthfromdarkness.com. <laughs>